I myself should become a cast away. You can read that up in First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. And then in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, you cannot say this if you are not real. In Galatians chapter 2, and in verse 20, say, I am, not I was, I am presently crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, how can a believer overcome loss? Somebody from this side, please. How can a believer overcome loss? Yes? Quickly? Yeah. A believer can overcome loss by giving himself to prayers, studying the word of God, and examine, constantly examine his life in the world, I mean the light of the living world. Thank you very much. Point number two, caution against worldliness and pride. If you come to verse four of our test, verse four to six, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusted to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he said, God resisted the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. I pray God will give you grace this morning. Say amen. Loss and worldliness are closely connected. When we as believers begin to befriend, fraternize, fellowship with the world, it is likely to the scene of adultery. In fact, if you read Acts chapter 20 verse 28, uh, it, it talks about the, the believers as the, the, the children of God. If you, let's, let's look at it, Acts chapter, chapter 20, verse 28. We are in a special relationship with God. It says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which has purchased um, by his own blood. Which means we are the church, the flock of God. We are purchased. We are in a special relationship with God. And then in, in um, Romans chapter 12, Verse 1 and 2, Romans chapter 12, I read verse 1, verse 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I be not con conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew your mind present your bodies. Some people will tell you that, well, my Christianity is about spiritual things. God, uh, God knows who I am. My body doesn't matter. Say, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then uh, when we use the resources of God, the body God has given us, and other resources that we have to sponsor and support and sustain projects that are against God, we become adulterers and adulteresses. And uh, you, you find an example in Solomon, who used the resources God gave to him to build high places for Chemosh, Molech, and the likes. Even though God had appeared unto him, and God was very angry with Solomon. Jehoshaphat, the same thing. He, he, he pledged God's people and God's resources to support idolatrous and rebellious Ahab. Honestly, we, we cannot even pledge ourselves because our bodies the Bible says it's, it's the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Talk less of pledging members of the church, committing them to something, taking them to a cause that will lead them out of the faith. Jehoshaphat did that, and God was happy. The Lord sent a prophet to him to reprove him. If you come to Second Chronicles chapter 19 and in verse 2, and Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore, the wrath, of the wrath, therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. We are warned in scriptures to love not the world because the system, the principles, the religion, the music, the practices, the lifestyle, the ideas, the clubs, the association, everything that the practices of the world is enmity with God. If you come to first... John chapter 2 and verse 15. First John chapter 2 
Verse 15, there's a very clear warning there, and we cannot ignore this warning. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world summarize the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Can we read verse 17 together? One, two, go. And the world passeth away, and the loss thereof, eh? but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Worldliness begins in the heart. With secret admiration for worldly practices, the commonest manifestation of worldliness can be seen in the area of dressing and adornment, which does not cover all sensitive parts of the body. This implies sinful passions and others, both engaging and drawing away their minds from thinking about God and His righteousness. Satan wants people to expose their nakedness, but God wants His children to cover up properly. Believers must not adorn themselves with worldly mat and, mat and, and material things, like painting the face, attachments of all kinds, earrings, and bleaching of the skin. You can read First Timothy chapter 2, as time will permit us, you read First Timothy chapter 2, and in verse 9, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, it says there, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, or gold, or pierce, or costly array, but with becoming women, professing godliness with good works. How does worldliness begin, and what are some of its expressions? Well, because of our time, I'll give you the answer quickly here. It makes us, when, we, when, when worldliness begins from the heart, it makes us detectable. God will not want to move close to somebody who is worldly or somebody who put, just put things on his body. And um, it's, worldliness is dangerous. It makes us God's enemies, leads to loss of Christian conviction and backsliding. The church will be de 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 bedeviled with carnal comparison and competition. There will be un unanswered prayers and it attracts the wrath of God. Uh, you can, if we read James chapter 4, verse 6, we read it already. He also talked about pride. Pride is a characteristic of the world. For all that is in the world, the place we read before, that is 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. Pride is driven by loss. Loss for attention, position, prestige, power, fame, special privileges, recognition, accomplishment, and domin domination of others. Pride is defiling, deceptive, and destructive. You can read Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, Pride goes before destruction and a healthy spirit before a fall. Pride brought Lucifer to the size of the pit. I pray that God will help us to hear that warning in Jesus' name. We go to the last point because of our time. Condemnation for presumption and boasting. Condemnation for presumption and boasting. James chapter 4 from verse 13. Go to now. Ye that say, Today or tomorrow we go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor. That question, you just pass it across to yourself. What is your life? It's just, evil, it's just a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or, or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Verse 17, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth is not, to him it is sin. Boasting is evil because no one knows tomorrow. Because of your certainty of tomorrow, we must acknowledge God in every plan and project that we undertake. Builders of the Janjati Tower, if you read about it in Genesis chapter 11, the Tower of Babel, they conceived their project without consulting God. God simply just came and confounded their language and the project was aborted. The rich man, the rich fool, he was talking about his harvest. Let's let just uh, 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 read it. You can just turn to Luke chapter 12 and in verse 16. Luke chapter 12 verse 16, he was talking about the bountiful harvest. He doesn't know that his time was up. His time was up. Luke chapter 12. Let's even look at verse 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? The man was boasting about increased harvest to the neglect of his soul. 
and not knowing that that, that night he was going, his time was up. And then if you read uh, Psalm 49, Psalm 49, and um, we read from verse 10 to verse 14. Psalm 49, verse 10 to verse 14. Says, For he said that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish, and leave their word to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being in honor abided not, he is like the beast that perish. I pray that God will help us to understand the substance of this life and to live for him in Jesus' name. The last question from the text, highlight the scriptural basis or the scriptural based solutions to the problems of worldliness among brethren. Yes, somebody from this side. Scriptural based solutions. How about here? Okay, just quickly come to uh, James chapter 4, and in verse 6, you see all of them listed there. If, let's say, look at verse 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your heart, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned be turn to mourning, and your joy to happiness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. The Lord will give us understanding in all things in Jesus' name. Shall we rise to pray, please? Talk to God this morning. That the Lord will align our lives to the things we are learning. That the Lord will help us that we will not run away from the truth. One thing is to know the truth, another thing is to face the truth. Let's pray that God will help us to face the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that the blessing of the word we had today will remain with us forever. And your grace will preserve us until we see you face to face. In Jesus' name we pray.